Hello, hello, hello. This is Arville Craig, and I wanted to create this quick training on how to use custom GPTs and how I used it to produce emails in my own voice. Um, yeah, let's get into it. So again, if you haven't, you know, if you don't know who I am, I'm Arville Craig. You can learn more about me at arvillecraig.com. And when you get there, make sure you grab a copy of the AI Strategy Playbook, where I cover 21 different marketing plays to cut costs, increase performance, and speed up AI adoption. And so generally, I'm normally just given high-level overviews, like the book is just in the high-level overview, but I am creating and producing these videos to kind of give you more details into the specific plays in the book, which are specific and practical plays and things that you can do in your life and business. One last thing I will share before we get into it, whenever I talk about AI, I'm always trying to break out the different ways we can use AI because it's not just about ChatGPT and all the other models like Gemini and Claude. There are also apps, niche apps and legacy apps. So when I say a legacy app, I mean things like Adobe, Photoshop, Canva, HubSpot, Salesforce, LinkedIn, all these applications that have been on online for years now they're they all have ai powered features to them so before you go into something like chat gpt and try to figure out prompting and prompt engineering why don't you look into the apps that you use every day and find out what are the ai features that are already built into them because those apps will most likely have the prompting and the engineering and all those fine tuning aspects already built into them. And that can save you a lot of time and energy if you're not the best at prompting. But, I, but either way, um, you can use models, you can use apps or niche apps. You can use agents. Well, agents aren't really a great option yet, but they are coming soon. So I definitely want to encourage you to pay attention to agents and things like that. And then of course there are no code solutions where you can build custom solutions. If there's not an app or a model that can do everything you want, you may be able to build your own workflow in something simple like a Zapier or a Make or a Respell. Okay. So now today when I talk about building custom GPT, so we are of course talking about using chat GPT. And specifically, the feature where you can build your own custom GPTs. And if you don't know what that is, I will pull up ChatGPT now. And when you are in ChatGPT, at the top left, you can see this Explore GPTs. I believe now, even on free versions of ChatGPT, you can go through this huge library of different types of custom versions of ChatGPT. They do very specific things very specific skills. They're already tuned and trained to do one specific thing. And it helps a lot. Again, if you don't know about all the prompts necessary to do what you want it to do. But if you have a paid version of chat GPT, you can build your own GPT, which it's like building your own workflow. You've already figured out the prompts. You have figured out what you want it to do. And you can pull up that GPT to follow a three, four, five, six step process to do the exact same thing every time. So if I go into my account, um, you can see here in the top left that I have the Arvel email, right? This is a custom GPT that I built so that ChatGPT could write emails in the exact style that I write, okay? I write in a conversational way. I like to include stories. I like to include metaphors. And so I built this custom GPT to do that specifically. So I just want to show you what's possible and I will just give you the back end of what my custom GPT looks like. So you see here, I'm going to hit, click edit the GPT and you can kind of see what it looks like to build your own GPT. You can actually just have a conversation with chat GPT and it will build your GPT for you. On mine, I'm going to click on the configuration tab and you can see here, all there is is there is this instructions area where I describe what the, you can say the job description of this custom GPT is. It is a personal insights email creator. You see, I'm telling ChatGPT that its job is to create an engaging and insightful email for my personal email list. And the instructions for this GPT or this workflow is to ask the user three questions. First, ask what is the hook or the story of the, or the theme of the email. Number two, ask what is what is the the value or the principle the concept that the email was supposed to talk about and then number three what is the call to action used at the end of the email to drive the reader to take that action okay and you can see here i also say um 
come up with some metaphors to connect the story with the principle or value. OK, and then the way it figures out the tone or the structure, the cadence, the style of the email, I want it to use these documents. I included some of my emails in its knowledge base here. And I also grabbed one from Pinsetto, Travis Sago, other, you know, some copywriters, mentors, other people's styles of emails. I uploaded those as examples. So it's using those styles and it's using a bunch of my own emails as the examples to use to, to create the structure of the email. Okay. So that is simply how you build a custom GPT. You give it instructions and ideally you, if you can give it examples, you call that um, few shot learning is a, uh, is a prompt engineering terminology when you're training a model. Yes, you give it instructions, and you can also give it examples so that it not only learns based upon your instructions, it also learns by mimicking the examples that you, that you give it. So that is how you can, how you build a, a, um, a GBT. Again, this specific one is going to take my style of email and write an email in my own style. So let's go ahead and go through an example. I'm going to create the button and that starts this GPT. And it's asking you what's the story or, th or the theme. And I'm going to say to use AI or to use my own um, mind. And say to use the brain of AI or to use my own mind. That is the theme. And what's the value? The value is going to be focus on the end user, not on your own pride of creation. Okay. And what's the call to action? Call to action is if you want to learn how to use AI to expand your brain's ability, contact I don't know, something simple, but that's the basic concept that I'm just coming up off the top of my head. And, and again, just to explain more about this, I'm actually writing an article right now for my Substack about using AI for articles versus using my own or our own, um, again, creativity. And I think in one sense, we think about, is it authentic if I'm using AI? Is it not authentic, you know, authentic? In one sense, that is a true thing to think about. In one sense, if you're a creative person and you want to talk to people, and you're like, okay, I need to always be me. I need to be real. I need to be authentic. The only problem is that that questioning is more focused on you rather than focused on the end user. If you're writing something or if you're in business and your goal is to actually help the other person, the goal is that you help the other person regardless. If it's you, that's great, but it's like, what if you had an employee? What if you had a, a, a subcontractor? Is it, is it okay to use an employee to deliver the results to the person or does it have to be you, right? This is the, a, a stumbling block that everybody, a lot of people in business will go through when you choose to not just be the, a solopreneur doing what you wanna do, always being that first line of defense to your customer, but eventually you hire people. And so the customer is not interacting with you. They're interacting with somebody else. And is that okay? It's the same thing with AI. Yes, I want to be me and I want to be authentic, but in other sense, you know, let's focus on the end user, focus on what they need. And if AI can deliver what they need, why stand in the way of giving people what they need? And I think the same philosophy relates to content. So yes, we wanna write content, we wanna be authentic, but in other sense, if there's a way you can use AI to give the end user what they want, even if it's not you, I think it's okay if you're actually solving a problem for the other person. Anyway, that's just my opinion. And that, you know, inspired me to come up with this idea. So how would AI write an email that conveys what I just explained to you? Am I gonna use my brain or am I using AI's brain? And so here you see here that AI has written an email. Um, it says Travis here. So it's using one of my samples um, and one of my um, sample emails but it's telling a story about kind of, again, it's telling a story to convey this idea that I just talked about. 
So for me, all I can do, I can just go through here, edit a few things, and this can be a nice email that I can use, or I might post this on social media. You can see it's a very conversational style email in the way that I write. Anyway, you can do it however you wanna do it, however your style is. If you upload examples of your own writing style and you give AI some instructions, it can give you a quick, um, it can save you a lot of time and help you get started creating your own content in your own voice. If you got any questions, of course, you can always hit me up. You know where to find me and create a great day. Bye.